to um, uh, Gitanjali. Could you tell us where you're joining us from? Carlos, so this is Gitanjali, CEO of Energy Guru. Um, I'm joining from Washington, D.C. right now. However, we are based in India. So uh, right now I'm traveling to India. Sorry, in U.S. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us uh, during your trip. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> great. And uh, Zafir, where are you? Where are you joining us from? Hi, Carlos. I'm joining from Lahore, from Pakistan. That's where uh, our head office is. Okay, great. Well, I think without you know further uh, ado, if we can start. So, uh, Zafir, over to you. Uh, thanks, Carlos. Uh, just let me bring up the presentation and we can get started. Great. So, um, as I said, you know, to everyone in the in the audience, so don't be shy. Uh, post your comments on the chat box and also, um, you know, your questions once, you know, you hear the presentations or during the presentations in the Q&A uh, box at the bottom of the toolbar. So, uh, well... Over to you, Zafir. Uh, thanks, Carlos. Um, so I'm Zafir Wahid. I'm CEO and founder of Zed Solar. Uh, Zed Solar is a uh, spin-off uh, uh, from an engineering company, AE Design, uh, and we're active in various parts of solar power. So <clears throat> uh, to start off today's uh, presentation on our on the cleaning and why cleaning is important and the different cleaning options for photovoltaic solar parks. Um, I'll just give you a quick background uh, of our company and then move on. So, uh, as I said, uh, Z Solar is a spin off of AE Design. It's an engineering design company uh, founded back in 2002 by myself. Uh, and we uh, had a solar division since 2008. Uh, started off in CSP uh, back then. And then over the years, we've expanded to PV and also uh, to robotics um, with a special focus on cleaning for CSP and also cleaning for uh, PV uh, parks. Uh, we have projects in Pakistan, in the Middle East, in Europe. So we have experience of uh, deploying and also experience of operating in various countries where the conditions vary, um, which uh, require different solutions. Uh, being a technology company, you know, we have uh, uh, several patents. Uh, we also have uh, won several awards for our technology. Um, you know, we've been uh, featured by Sheikh Mohammed, the ruler of Dubai, uh, with one of our products uh, in Dubai. And so uh, that's a little bit about what we have done. So moving on to today's topic, uh, the importance of uh, cleaning for PV solar parks. So as you all know, there's very little uh, maintenance that needs to be done in a solar field or in a PV solar field or, uh, with, apart from cleaning. And uh, uh, good cleaning is very, very important uh, because uh, that's how you ensure uh, you have optimal power output. Uh, now, depending on which part of the world you are in, uh, cleaning uh, can take on a very high level of significance. Uh, say if you're in the Middle East, uh, or other such dusty areas where the soiling rates are very, very high, um, you can have tremendous amounts of uh, power loss if uh, you do not clean properly. Uh, so, and this can vary from uh, 16 to 40% on an annual basis. Uh, so it's not something that you want to take lightly. Largely cleaning has been based on manual methods. Uh, these are uh, time intensive and cost intensive and also water intensive. Uh, and especially with, you know, fresh water becoming more of a rare commodity, uh, uh, water issues are also uh, extreme. Uh, a robotic cleaning system can avoid all of these um, and it can allow us to safely and economically <clears throat> make sure that solar fields uh, are operating at their maximum optimal power. And this in turn of obviously uh, gives a good financial return uh, to the investor on their uh, solar plant. So we did a, a case study uh, in the UAE in Dubai, um, in which uh, we looked at, uh, we took the precipitation data, so the rain data in the year, and it's about uh, 87 millimeters. So this is uh, not taken over a very large sampling period, but in a typical year, they had about 87 millimeters of rain. Uh, and we can see February and March received most of the rain, and thereafter there's very little rain. So if we were to take this sort of uh, a, uh, 
uh, a rain pattern and uh, deduce and assume that if it rained, whenever it rained, uh, the solar panels were properly cleaned, which is not necessarily the case because if it doesn't rain uh, properly, if it doesn't rain heavily, then uh, you actually don't get a cleaning effect, you actually get the opposite. But assume that the rain cleans the park and then if we see in the bottom graph that uh, between, the, uh, between the rains, uh, the daily soiling rate of 0.2% per day adds up to a lot. So if we look from May to December um, until the next rainfall, uh, you would have a 45% uh, soiling loss in Dubai without cleaning. So clearly cleaning is very, very important. Um, so then if we look at a, a one megawatt uh, sample using this data, <clears throat> with and without scheduled cleaning. So we can see that uh, with scheduled cleaning, we would have a, an increase of 16% in production, uh, which would lead to an additional uh, revenue of about, say, $12,000, considering five cents uh, per kilowatt hour. And you can see the bottom graph is um, the, the, the blue bars are without cleaning and the red bars are cleaning uh, with scheduled cleaning. So you can see the energy loss goes up and then we clean, then it goes up again. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, these figures can be tailored uh, so we could have more frequent cleaning, thereby reducing the, the, the power losses further. <clears throat> so then moving on to cleaning, um, you know, there's a lot of cleaning methods out there. Um, there's no standardization. Um, manual cleaning is still uh, probably the most uh, common forms of cleaning. Uh, you can see there's, uh, in, in the various pictures, there's all sorts of uh, techniques used. Uh, but again, it's very labor intensive, uh, therefore it does have a, a quite a high cost penalty. Um, it's very water intensive as well. Uh, you know, we're typically seeing that uh, the water consumption is anywhere from one to two liters per panel uh, per wash if you do a manual wash process. And then of course, uh, manual washing has to be done in the daytime as well, which has its uh, disadvantages. And um, at the same time, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, if you are uh, cleaning a rooftop system, then it does have its uh, health uh, hazards as well. Uh, so as I said, you know, if we look at uh, cleaning, manual cleaning on rooftops, um, it poses hazards uh, of someone tripping or falling from the building. Uh, and also uh, when we start to clean PV panels uh, in the daytime, uh, we do have to also remember the fact that these are very high voltage systems. Uh, and if there were to be any sort of a fa uh, failure in the, in the earthing system or the cabling or something, it could cause a very serious uh, electrocution risk to uh, somebody who's cleaning it. And then also uh, on, a, on another, another aspect, which is more uh, prevalent on rooftops, is that if you're using one to two liters per panel to wash per wash, um, then you end up with a lot of additional water which will be standing on rooftops. And this uh, obviously causes more stress in the rooftops uh, for potential seepage and, and, and water damage. So having gone over the, the, the different types of, uh, you know, uh, manual cleaning, um, let's look at, you know, what's the advantage of using an automated cleaning system. So one of the advantages is that automated cleaning systems can be run overnight or also in uh, hours of low sunshine, uh, which avoids uh, any production loss. Uh, and also uh, it avoids uh, any uh, thermal shock or releases the chance of thermal shock to the panels where you're spraying hot uh, cold water or let's say room temperature water on panels which could be very hot by, uh, due to being in the, in the sun in the daylight. And also it avoids any issues of partial shading on panels. So that's one advantage you can schedule cleaning uh, out of production hours. And then also you're drastically reducing the, uh, the, the cost uh, because of the time that's used. Uh, so it requires minimal uh, human intervention um, and definitely even a semi-automated system has a lot less human intervention than a uh, manual system. Uh, and with a lower cost, uh, you are then obviously able to clean on a more frequent basis, uh, which has the benefit of giving you uh, more optimal power production. Uh, so, and uh, again, with the robotic cleaning process, uh, one of the advantages, it's a reliable process and it's consistent, which means that you can ensure every panel is what is cleaned fully uh, each time. Uh, so uh, it, it cannot be the case that whoever was manually cleaning uh, 
did not, uh, you know, did not do a good job or, or missed some part or, or whatever the case may be. So again, as we saw with manual cleaning, there are a quite a few methods out there uh, for automated cleaning as well. Uh, you know, the uh, tractor mounted ones. Then there are uh, robots which are running around on panels. Uh, um, they are uh, robots which are uh, uh, drive along panels, uh, guided by them. Uh, so uh, there's dry cleaning ones. There's wet cleaning ones. What's important? in any uh, solution is that A, it should have minimum, minimal uh, user uh, interface or user, user, user um, uh, requirement to operate it, so it should operate itself. Uh, and secondly, uh, it should uh, also uh, uh, be clean and not, possible, not, damage, uh, you know, uh, not damage any of the structure as a, the case could be uh, with a tractor and also obviously be robust, so an overly complicated solution is also uh, not going to uh, be ideal. So if we look at the different solutions we had um, on the last uh, slide, we can see that they can broadly be, you know, uh, uh, divided different categories. So a dry rotating brush uh, scrubbing action, it's a rotating brush with air pressure to help blow the dust away. Uh, we can skip, let's say, electrostatic cleaning and um, uh, water spray systems. Uh, then there's also a wash and wipe uh, wash and scrub, so you have a rotating brush with a water spray, and then the last option being the wash, uh, scrub, and wipe. So if we were to assign different categories uh, of, of, of characteristics that we would like uh, to measure these systems by, so let's say there's water consumption, energy consumption, cleaning efficiency, the cost of actually buying the system, uh, the maintenance cost, and then the effectiveness in high salinity environments or in harsh conditions, so in desert conditions. And I'll, I'll come back to why I, I, I high salinity is, is separately mentioned. So obviously dry rotating brush has, uh, you know, a, a, for example, a very low, uh, has no water consumption. So it's got the highest rating on, on water consumption. So the higher the number, the better it is uh, on that. So if we look at all of this, we can see that, uh, you know, uh, that the different systems score differently. Um, and the system which has the, the, the most, uh, the highest rating would be a wash, scrub and wipe system. So basically in this, you're, you have a rotating brush or, or a sanded brush, which is scrubbing, and then you're using water uh, and then you're wiping the water off. Uh, so this has, has the lowest water consumption, a system like this. Uh, now, if we look at uh, the, the point I mentioned uh, on in high salinity environments, uh, so, uh, you have different types of dust and in a desert or in an environment where you're near the sea as let's say Dubai again um, the, the the salinity in the atmosphere uh, causes the dust to actually stick and adhere, adhere to the panels itself so dry cleaning becomes less effective in such an environment uh, so that's why we rate it separately other than uh, uh, when compared to say if you're in uh, an inland area where the dust would not stick to the panels itself and you could probably uh, get away with uh, just you know, cleaning it with a brush. So having a look at this, we can see that you know, the best system the, uh, would be to, to wash, scrub and wipe it. Um, then you could wash and wipe. Uh, so the disadvantage from wash and wiping is that you don't have any scrubbing action. So if you have any hard dust that's accumulated, uh, and especially if you have not cleaned uh, frequently, it may be the case that you might not be able to clean the panels fully in, in one wipe and you might need to do two, two or three runs to clean them. And then of course, if you're not in an environment which has high salinity in the air, then a, a dry rotating brush scrubbing could also potentially uh, uh, be a feasible solution. So moving on to the solution that we believe is the, uh, is the, is the best solution, the right solution is a, a robot which drives along uh, the row and then has a carrier, has a carriage which would move it from one row to the other row. Uh, so in this system, if we go for a, uh, a scrub, uh, wash and wipe system, then we get the best combination in, we have uh, less water use because we're actually wiping it. So we use less water than say a uh, brush and water system. Uh, and also uh, uh, by using one robot, which is effectively more reliable 
and is, uh, is better built and having a carriage take that robot from one row to the other row uh, gives us a more robust and reliable solution and a cheaper solution as well, rather than each row having its own robots. Uh, so in a solution like this, uh, with once weekly cleaning, you could have one robot cleaning the entire uh, solar field, uh, a one megawatt solar field, uh, in compared to, you know, 10, 15 robots, uh, depending on how many rows you had in a one megawatt uh, field, or, or less robots if, the, if each row was uh, longer. But that's basically uh, why we believe this solution is better. Um, so looking at this solution specifically, when I come to, uh, you know, uh, just looking at, at, at water saving, for example, a wash, scrub, and wipe system uses 125 milliliters of water per panel. Um, which is uh, which, which is proven. So, if we compare this to uh, the the cleaning, uh, manual cleaning per panel, uh, and as I mentioned, between one to two liters per panel. If we were to take the median of one point five liter, uh, we can see that per megawatt, one point five liters would need about two hundred forty two thousand liters uh, of water per year. Whereas a system like this would say uh, would, would use twenty thousand liters and say about two hundred twenty five thousand two hundred twenty two thousand liters, so there's quite a, a large water saving to be had there. Uh, in addition to uh, the other uh, benefits, where you know it can, um, that you get of uh, uh, regular regular cleaning. Um, Uh, and so uh, uh, it's a simple system which would simply drive along a, uh, uh, a row and uh, clean the dust as it goes along. Uh, so basically that's a, uh, that's a, uh, you know, a high level overview of uh, the different cleaning methods uh, and why uh, we believe cleaning is very, very important uh, for any uh, PV uh, park. And uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zanfi. A very uh, interesting presentation on the different methods of uh, cleaning uh, solar panels. So we have a couple of questions already in the Q&A box, and hopefully we'll have more coming um, our way. So um, next along, uh, we have uh, Getanjali and uh, well, we'll, um, you know, if you share your screen, uh, Getanjali, you know, and then you can start your presentation. Um, and uh, someone asked whether you, they'll be getting the uh, webinar recordings and presentations. And absolutely, yes, in a few days' time, you'll all get the recordings and presentations. But um, don't uh, leave us because then you'll uh, miss the chance of asking questions live to our experts so please do stay um so um get angeli you are um we can see your screen but you're on mute so there we go yes uh, so well over over to you yeah thank you carlos and then Zafir, it's an excellent presentation and i think you have covered pretty much half of my presentation so i would uh, definitely go slightly faster now um so uh, yeah let me introduce myself this is gitanjali i'm ceo and co-founder of energy guru uh, today i'll be talking about robotic module cleaning system uh, especially by um, our company energy guru um, so just a background on the company. I think this is uh, similar um, as uh, Zafir said. Um, we also have a background um, in terms of concentrating solar. The company started in US in 2007 by me, and uh, we um, entered into India. Uh, a lot of innovations happened in uh, concentrating solar in uh, industrial solar boiler as well as agriculture uh, produced drying. And uh, robotic module cleaning system, the uh, solar duster, is our um, latest innovation that we have launched in Indian market and also on the global basis as well. Uh, so this is me and a couple of my um, uh, other partners and uh, our team uh, in India. Now, the water situation in India uh, is extremely dire. And of course, like I come from a place called Latur, which is one of the uh, the driest part of Maharashtra, which is the industrialized state in India. And um, it, this is where, you know, we pretty much ended up bringing water by train uh, in 2006, uh, 15, uh, around 2016. 
so it's a very uh, dire situation especially the agri rich countries um, like india and of course when we talk about middle east it's going to be you know uh, much more scarcity of water so i think we have to save the water that is our first criteria and of course the next thing that comes into picture is uh, we are putting all these solar power plants in the uh, dry arid regions and there's hardly any water so we can't take it for granted uh, in terms of how you know washing with water so right now um, especially in india a uh, majority of the plants are washing with uh, water one in anywhere from like 16 to 20 uh, cycles per year and you can see that uh, there's an amazing amount of dust that's out there and uh, it can cause anywhere from 0.2% to 0.5% loss per day uh, in indian region and um, and of course like you know uh, currently yes do they do get water uh, from surrounding regions many times you know these plants may or may not be using the the best quality water um, and so that can ca start causing issues to the solar modules as well now i think uh, this is the slide that zafir has already shared like you know how how currently it is being washed so anywhere from 10 to 20000 liters uh, uh, is needed per megawatt per wash now this numbers can vary depending on the how much abundance of water these uh, you know certain um, certain plants have we have seen you know much more higher numbers as well in some cases um so i think in terms of the robotic module cleaning systems um you know indian charan is not perfect like what you see in the western regions especially in america or uh, some part of europe so uh, modules are you know pretty much laid out in a relatively not so uh, perfect um, or uh, terrain perspective so uh, it is very difficult to implement robots that uh, that need uh, a perfect situation in terms of the terrain so um, that being said we have to be very creative in terms of what kind of solutions we uh, bring it to the you know uh, the difficult uh, market like india now um, as i said like why we need robotic cleaning because right now um, there are a lot of standards that are set by uh, module cleaning uh, company sorry the module companies itself in terms of what kind of pressure can be applied on the modules what kind of uh, you know the, the the salinity of water uh, or what kind of salt concentration it needs to have but all those criteria sometimes may or may not be met and uh, that being said um, of course like water and um, metal or you know they definitely are not a great combination so hence uh, it does make sense to uh, go with robotic cleaning because many times you know the uh, the uh, operators will be washing the uh, modules and they see a snake and they will run away you know so it it many times uh, it may or may not be a perfect situation for water along with uh, along with uh, solar power plants especially during daytime um of course like water and the electricity is the worst combination that you can have so i think uh, but at the same time water and uh, daytime washing should be avoided considering that uh, the modules themselves will get a, a thermal shock and uh, there will be more uh, micro cracks that will get eventually developed in the uh, solar modules i think um, as far as uh, the current um, installations are concerned we all almost have like a 400 uh, gigawatt of uh, solar uh, power plants installed all, all over the world and i think i already covered that almost uh, almost uh, up to 20 um, 20 cycles uh, per year uh, again the countries like india sometimes they uh, they are um, using for cleaning water and uh, majority of these are coming um, from you know coming in from very uh, arid region and uh, so we are talking about a billions of liters of water that is being wasted in this very dry region so we have to avoid that first of course um, money is to be made just by cleaning the solar modules uh, so that that that's a, a second a most important second uh, region that, uh, reason that we have to consider um but i think as uh, zafir already mentioned like can developers actually afford uh to buy one row one robot concept so for example the leading uh, robot companies have one row one robot concept and uh, can that be afforded so i doubt considering that you know the the tariffs are uh, so much uh, come down uh, especially in india where we are talking about 2.44 rupees or us 3.3 us cents that being said i think uh, uh being able to afford like one row one robot concept uh, is very difficult at this point And, um, and there is a lot of pressure on the capex as well as opex perspective so uh, i think what what is needed is the um, is the you know more portable solution and also not only that but um, in india like or even in the middle east we have enough uh, younger population 
and that can be uh, tapped into as well because uh, majority of the solar power plants do uh, uh, come you know uh, by taking some of the farmers land that is not that cultivable so the farmers are looking for alternative incomes as well so if we can start bringing this uh, a combination of robots that that can be used by the younger population that would be the best combination that we 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 believe in and in india they like we have like almost two third of the population is up under 35 which means that they all are ready for um, uh, you know using such systems that and of course this uh, these um, this young population can stay in the region where they actually belong to as well um so we of course did a lot of research around the world in terms of what's happening uh, and what kind of robotic systems are there um so we had to bring the system that would work for indian context and if we can make it work in india we can make it work anywhere any part of the world and that that's what we believed in so uh, of course like um, unlike zafir system we uh, ours is a completely waterless system um because of what water is one of the scarcest resource then we need to make sure that we say, uh, spare, uh, spare that water for the agriculture in india um so this is waterless system of course it's a flexible system which can be uh, moved from one uh, uh, one row to another one manually or automatic way and um, of course uh, we have six different models of robots and uh, um, that depend on depending on what kind of uh, requirements the you know the developers have and most importantly our system does not require any infrastructure changes and that is one of the biggest advantage that we have so we can actually take a robot go to the plant and within like a matter of hours we can start operating the um, the robot on on site itself now the brush was one of the most important criteria we started with the emu feathers considering that you know emu feather has an excellent ability to clean clean the dust but then uh, when we started talking uh, to uh, big developers we realized that uh, emu feathers may not uh, may not be the best solution because considering that we are talking about a, you know large number of robots uh, to be deployed for these large developers so that being said um, we chose uh, a soft nylon brush which is uh, nylon 6 with a point um, 0.15 uh, thickness and it's we uh, rotated that at 100 rpm um, uh, 100 rpm um, speed to get the best uh, optimal cleaning for the uh, for the uh, solar panels so this is a very soft brush and that's very softly it sweeps the uh, dust and um, uh, cleans it very well so we have tested uh, this uh, you know uh, the duster along with uh, many of the uh, you know dust um, dust from all over the world and um, yeah so these are just the kind of dust that we have tested so far which is like from dubai as well as some karnool and the the biggest solar parks that are out there now uh, these are our models and uh, for uh, for solar duster now the reason we brought multiple um, dusters because we realized that one uh, you know one model may not suit uh, all the uh, uh, all the situations and uh, we had to depending on the how the solar power plants are structured so i think sometimes you know they do have space uh, between the modules uh, which is horizontal space uh, may or may not exist so that time the horizontal brush system may not be the appropriate one because it the dust starts getting accumulated so depending on what kind of uh, what kind of plant layout is there and what kind of structure underneath is there we decided to uh, you know bring the different models now this vertical brush system is one of the uh, the very fast system that um, that uh, that cleans um, relatively well and uh, then also we have oh, again there are certain developers wanted to bring a uh, bring a, a, a automatic train that will actually carry these robots from one row to another one and i will explain to you a uh, slight uh, you know slightly further what what we have done now this is the horizontal brush system it's a relatively slow system that brings the dust down but then it may not be the most uh, you know very fast system either so this is again a portable system does not require any structural changes at all you just start uh, putting it in on the existing structures and starts working now this is a vertical brush system uh, almost six times faster than the earlier version um, it this can, this is again a portable one does not require any infrastructure changes and you can start uh, cleaning uh, immediately 
and this can clean up to uh, anywhere from uh, 500 kilowatt to 700 kilowatt in a day and so that being said you can uh, one one duster can be utilized for uh, multiple uh, multiple megawatts as well but that depends on uh, again like uh, the cleaning hours and um, uh, we recommend like 3 to 4 hours uh, uh, daily operations and depending on that of course you can decide how much uh, how many robots you would need uh, this is our uh, a small uh, we call it a toy robot or a rover uh, it just goes on the modules themselves uh this is uh, we are one of the companies uh, i would say uh, or one of the rare companies right now which have the uh, solution for the the trackers and uh, solar duster has a solution that can go on next tracker as well and next uh, in this is one of the relatively complex robot where uh, there is a the, the the there are protrusions that are coming above the module so we had to develop a system that would actually uh, lift the brush and take the uh, still uh, keep moving forward so this is uh, um, we have taken care of the, those um, developments where uh, the modules will, you know will continue to go forward without uh, getting bothered by the protrusions above the modules uh, because of the bearings and i think um, so and each of these more uh, like models that we have developed are portable ones so th those can be just taken from one row to another one and uh, the handles that we have got are like pretty much act like a stand so the operators can just lift it take it from one row to another one if they get tired they can keep it down you know move it to the next next one so that uh, that's how it is designed and these are some pictures um, of you know the operators lifting system yeah so this is one of the things that uh, we have developed which is a uh, robotic train system that can be uh, that can actually take, carry a robot from one row to another one not by uh, the people but automatically so this is a robotic uh, trolley that actually talks to the uh, um, uh, talks to the, the the cleaning robot and there is a machine to machine communication happening it's all uh, done through iot platform and uh, can't completely be controlled by um, cloud Uh, through this uh, you know advanced uh, iot platform and it is a lot of analytics that we have done for uh, collecting um, you know the con controlling and collecting uh, or the showing the reports on what, what is being cleaned um so this is just a concept so why a, a train that a train trolley that is a, a robot by itself that takes the robot on the the trolley then takes uh, goes forward uh, cleans the second row comes down so you can of course decide like you know how many uh, rows you want to uh, you know uh, clean so in this case of course there is one uh, condition that is out there that the terrain has to be relatively well because you are talking about a train that has to carry uh, uh, carry the uh, robot from one row to another one automatically so that means that the train has to be aligned to the uh, rows properly so that you know there's a there's an easy movement of the uh, robot now so our system can um, actually uh, I, we have an attachment that uh, we mount the thermographic camera on top of our uh, uh, robot that where that would actually take the thermographic images of the uh, robot from the top as well as the bottom so in uh, so uh, what happens is currently um, a majority of the developers are doing the solar module inspections using the thermographic cameras uh, that are mounted on the um, mounted on the drones however uh, that may not may or may not be the best approach because uh, the image quality may not be the great and you may not get the granularity of the information so uh, by having the relatively close uh, uh, close uh, look at you know the, the the modules actually you will be able to detect what is going on and uh, so currently these thermographic cameras are pretty much hand uh, uh, the operators hold in hand and then the whole day they have to uh, uh, carry it um, by hand and then then they, uh, then they uh, actually do the inspection and also from the bottom side where uh, 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 which is again uh, more, uh, difficult task for the operators so th that we are actually just by creating a mounting for the uh, uh, for the uh, robot we have we, uh, been able to take care of that one and in the next generation we will have uh, actually being able to uh, exactly note down which which module has got problem so that by reading the rfid tags on the uh, on the solar modules 
Now, this is our architecture where, uh, of course, the, the docking train that I had uh, mentioned, that is a completely optional feature. Uh, of course, there is a, we have a block controller, uh, which is a, a cloud-based system again that can control the robots when if you happen to choose uh, uh, robotic cleaning uh, that's completely fully automated and you can monitor the, uh, remotely and uh, control from your um, command center. Um, these are all the reports that we uh, uh, we do have and of course if we combine the uh, the generation data along with the soiling data then we start getting the intelligence and you can figure out actually where the cleaning needs to happen so all that uh, is all um, pretty much ready for implementation now this is one of the very important slide um, why it makes sense to go with the portable robot so i think uh, when it comes to um, uh, our analysis it shows that if if you uh, Right now, you might be cleaning once in 15 days, but jumping from 15 days to one, uh, like a you know, daily cleaning cycle, like what typically the, the fully automated robotic companies would recommend you, um, is may, may or may not be the best approach. So in this case, uh, and especially if you have you know, um, an option of having some uh, cheap labor that is uh, available around. So what we see is um, cleaning once in four to five days or six days would be most optimal in terms of getting the the, the generation gain uh, and, and then of course reduce, uh, reducing soiling losses as well as of course the capex that you have to consider for the uh, per megawatt basis. I think uh, when it comes to what kind of uh, robotic cleaning you want to implement, there are, of course, like as uh, Zafir has already uh, talked about, is you know there are truck-based systems, there are uh, systems that will go on the mount, uh, the, the module frames, or some some companies re require. Uh, um, specialty rail to be kept in. So what is your preparedness? You know, there are certain companies that are ready to uh, work at the design stage itself where they'll put the, these rails and you know, they, they'll do, do the full automation. So it depends on what kind of readiness you have in terms of robotic cleaning. And um, so you can choose based on that. And of course, like uh, you have to look into multiple um, uh, parameters before you choose a system. And also, uh, most important thing is um, many uh, the automated cleaning systems may or may not operate um, in a f uh, you know, the, for the existing plants. So if you have you know, a huge uh, asset that are sitting with, uh, on an existing uh, um, you know, asset, so I think you'll have to think about definitely a uh, system that would, that would not re require any major infrastructure changes. So uh, majority of the developers we see on the, not only just in India, but on a global basis uh, that uh, that are uh, interested into robotic cleaning. Uh, of course, there's SoftBank, there's Renew Power, and of the, uh, the other companies that are out there. Um, and especially we're seeing a lot of traction from Middle East and a lot of inquiries from uh, South America as well. And uh, the beauty of the robot that we have designed is that uh, even um, uneducated person can actually uh, see it. Okay, what does this mean? You know, do we do I need to keep the system on clean, no clean, or do I need to return, um, go to left, right? So all these very simple, uh, uh, simple buttons. Or if you go with the full uh, the portable model, they can decide and do that. And this uh, uh, the system automatically stops the moment it comes to the end of the uh, end of the module. So the operators don't have to take stress of if the system is going to fall down at the end of the row. So um, that is one of the big feature that we have in our robot. And I think this um, that's it for now. I think if you have any questions about our robots or if you want to implement uh, any of the robots, please do let us know. Um, we are located in uh, India. We are, our factory is in Pune. And um, uh, of course, like right now, we are open for the rest of the markets as well, not only just India. So yeah, happy to take any questions further. Thank you very much, uh, Getanjali, for the interesting presentation. Um, we've had um, a lot of questions, um, many of which have uh, already been answered, but we have a few, um, a few more. But before we jump in, uh, to uh, answer the questions uh, the public has uh, asked, um, I wanted to ask uh, both of you, so um, what would be the optimal uh, cleaning um, frequency if we what what would it depend on? I know Gitanjali, you had a slide on that, but could you uh, um, just like rewind because I I didn't quite get it, and I think it's uh, it's important. 
Uh, yes. Um, so, Carlos, um, in our opinion, it is uh, anywhere from four to five day cleaning would be quite optimal considering uh, the soiling, typical soiling losses uh, that are out there and also the capex, uh, the investment in capex that you're doing uh, for per megawatt basis. So I think we, we see anywhere from four, four to six days would be most optimal in our, in our opinion. Okay, so that would be cleaning every four to six days. Yeah, once in four plan. or six days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zanfir, what what are your your thoughts on these? Are you have you observed the same in the in the place where you have worked, or have you seen something different? Uh, so I think uh, cleaning frequency is highly dependent a on location, b on uh, on the on the park owner. Uh, so for example. If we say in Pakistan, uh, once a week uh, is more than enough generally. However, let's say if you get a big dust storm during that time period, then you would need to go for another clean if you have a specific event which has occurred. Uh, on the other hand, if we look in Dubai, for example, mm -hmm. although you know our case study is based on 0.2% uh, uh, soiling, uh, we have a lot of industrial uh, users reporting up to 0.35% uh, soiling a day. Uh, and uh, what some of them want to, want to do, is especially the, uh, the, the, the users or the, the, the owners, park owners who have PPA, so, uh, you know, um, uh, power purchase agreements, uh, where they have to meet a, a minimum guaranteed power output, or even as an EPC, when you are contracted or guaranteed to, mint it, to meet a minimum power output, they're even keen to uh, uh, daily clean the system because they don't want to miss that power production target at any cost. Uh, so I think it's, it's, it's difficult to say that there's a, a hard and fast rule. Uh, I mean, in Pakistan, when I say once a week, for example, in the monsoon, reason, uh, monsoon season, you actually don't need to clean maybe for, uh, for uh, a month and a half because you, know, you have a, a strong enough rains for a really good self-cleaning impact. So, so it's, it's very location and case specific. Okay. Thank you. I mean, oh, that makes... Uh makes a lot of sense. Um, so we have um, a few quite, let's go through some of the questions from the audience. So, um, so um, for one, Verma is asking, has a, questions, has a question for Getan Dali, which is, uh, what is the extra weight consideration to accommodate this robot on a ton per megawatt basis? So um, over to you. Yes, yeah, so I think this is one of the biggest advantage that we have um, in terms of, you know, uh, any additional infrastructure changes. So I think the question is coming uh, because, you know, majority of the developers are seeing that they, there is a need for infrastructure addition um, to make the robotic cleaning happen. But in our case, we are talking about uh, extremely minimal changes to the, uh, the, the, the solar power plant. So, for example, if you have a small... Uh, a uh, gap of say 200 mm or uh, or so uh, gap, then you are just talking about a small bridges to just to connect the tables. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's extremely minimal compared to what typically you'd see for the this typical uh, you know the, the the daily cleaning uh, on the full automated system. So it's it's very less actually. There's hardly anything. So there's okay. not much additional uh, that uh, you need to consider. Great and. Uh... Another question. So, uh, Saini asks, how reliable is the camera in a dusty environment? Yes. So, uh, this is where we have a no clean option on a robot where uh, you can keep, you can use the same robot for uh, monitoring the power plant. So, you pretty much keep the, uh, the robot on a no clean basis and then you can actually uh, uh, put the, uh, you can do the assessment of what's going on with the thermographic camera. So the, we do have a no clean option where you are actually not doing the cleaning and then the um, dusting of the uh, cleaning and the, you know, the, the assessment at the same time. So we would recommend to keep those separate where it is possible. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so um, another question that came through the chat, uh, but uh, you know, it seems like a, a question that many uh, could have. So um, how um, can you make sure that robotic cleaning will not damage uh, the modules? Um, so I don't know who wants to go first. 
Zafir, you want to go first? Yeah, yeah I can go first. I mean, uh, so um, when it comes to de damaging damaging uh, modules, so so firstly, you know, uh, our robot is also certified by the major uh, PV companies, so they they are happy with the with the cleaning method. So that's one thing, the certification from the manufacturer. But also, uh, damage will actually not come from a robot because the robot actually drives on the panels and it's got a very light brushing and wiping action. Uh, damage typically, typically would come from a, either a manual operator or someone operating a, a tractor and then cleaning it. Uh, so th th there's actually no, no risk to damage from the panels from, from, from a robot, uh, at least the sort of similar to what we, uh, what we are providing. Yeah, Tanjali, would you like yeah, to add? To definitely. So I think uh, I would concur to that. And um, definitely current current cleaning methods are, uh, are definitely more harmful. Um, in, in our case, we have designed the robot with, uh, uh, with every nut and bolt in mind because we want to ensure that the pressure that we are applied on apply on the module is just enough so that the cleaning happens. So we are well within the range uh, in terms of what... Uh, how much pressure we can apply on the modules and also uh, with the brush itself. So I think uh, if you can consider these two uh, important criteria in terms of how much weight of the robot uh, uh, that is out there as well as what brush, what, what the brush is doing to the module. So these are two important criteria if uh, once the, you know, the, the robotic companies take care of it. Um, it's it's a pretty uh, say, uh, safe uh, solution, I would say. And we also uh, have gotten um, uh, approvals from the top tier uh, module manufacturers. So we yeah, are definitely module manufacturers are very open for um, these kind of methods. And uh, that, that that's the trend pretty much. Okay, thank you. And, um, you know, one, one question I have actually is, uh, what would be, um, of course, uh, you know, this would be one of those that is dependent on investment and the size of the um, of the plant and so on. But um, what would be a, a typical payback time that you would have on on a robot? Tal Zafir, you you want to go forward? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go first. Again, Carlos, it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I hate not to be able to give straight answers, but it's 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 not so straightforward. I'll tell you, for example, so you know you have the you have the capex of the robot, okay, and the payback time is calculated in the labor it saves in, from manual cleaning. Okay, so if you are sitting in a low labor cost country, then the robot might take you two two and a half years to pay back, for example. You know, if you are sitting in a high uh, value a high cost country. Uh, the robot might pay back in a year, okay, or even less than a year, for, exa uh, for example. Uh, and then again, it also depends on how many times you're cleaning again. So, you know, if you clean once a week, then, then the payback period of the robot will be much shorter. If you need to clean once a month, then of course the payback time of the robot will be, will be higher. So it's, it's, yeah, I would like to give a, precise, a more precise answer, but there's, there's lots of variables at play there. Of course, I understand. So yeah, I think uh, to add to that, I agree. Uh, it depends on how, uh, what kind of solution you are choosing. And if you go with a daily uh, cleaning option uh, with a full automation, definitely the payback period is going to be slightly higher. However, if you go with a portable option that we uh, recommend uh, to developers to reduce the capex on the module, oh, sorry, the, the robots. So in that situation, even the payback can even come uh, below, like anywhere from one to two years, depends on, uh, uh, how many robots you are buying for, for uh, you know for, for per block basis or like you know again depends uh, depends on the plant and also uh, your labor cost as well. So I think um, yeah the, the payback can be in anywhere from even like few months uh, depends on if the dust is a very high dust environment and the cleaning is of at utmost importance. So uh, the, in that case uh, the generation gain that you are going to get is going to immediately. Uh, subside some of the investment that you're done on the robot. So it depends anywhere from few months to uh, maybe two years or so. I think that's that's what we think. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, mm -hmm. another um, another question that came through the chat by uh, Amit Mittal is, uh, what, are what are the qualification criteria for modules uh, from a warranty point of view? Um, so, 
does it um are there criteria when it comes to um to meeting warranties uh that you need that uh, mod that robots need to apply to so um uh... If I, sorry, if I go first again. Um, so basically, I, I mean, you would need to, uh, so, so, so the process for a robot car manufacturer would be you need to, you know, discuss and show and explain to the technical uh, team of the, of the PV module company that your cleaning method would not cause any medium or long-term damage uh, to the panels. Mm. So it, it's so, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be too abrasive, you know, it should, it, it should, should not put excessive weight. So you need to take into, into factor the, the load, the live load, the dead load, which the panel can, uh, can withstand. Uh, so, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, they want to have a fair degree of certainty that, you know, you're not going to damage the panel before they say, okay, this is, uh, uh, this is okay to use. Okay. Thank you. And I, and I agree with Zafir on that one, absolutely. Okay. Well, I just wanted to ask, you know, whether you want to add anything. That, <laughs> um, the, um, there was a, a previous question that came on the, um, on the Q&A box that was answered, but I think it's, uh, you know, it's a, an interesting one. So someone asked, you know, how do you go about cleaning uh, bifacial panels and whether you could use like standard robots to clean bifacial panels? So, uh, what are your views on this? Uh, so, I mean, soiling basically happens, you know, <clears throat> on it's dust that that is settling from from, from as it, as it falls through the air and settles on something, right? So, on the front side, you you clean it as a as a regular panel, and on the back side, you will have almost minimal dust settling on it. Uh, and then also there's very little productivity from the back as well. So let's say if you say there's some dust because of electrostatic charging or something, you know, which is stuck to the panels, uh, that the backside is really producing so little. So if you, you, if you lose 1% of 1%, you know, as an example, you use very little versus losing 1% of 99% from the front of the panel. Uh, so uh, as far as we're concerned, bifacial cleaning would be pretty much the same as, uh, as regular cleaning. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Uh, at the same time, the structural integrity of the uh, bifacial modules along uh, would, uh, as long as it is similar to or um, similar or better um, compared to the, the current modules, I think that should not be an issue. Now, when it comes to cleaning from the, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the lower side, the bottom side, I think it's going to be uh, uh, definitely it, it, the need for that is going to be much lesser compared to the top side I think so uh, yeah so of course like maybe one day we'll have different robots just for cleaning the you know uh, in a different uh, the bifacial modules in a different way but right now I, I don't see you know uh, it's going to be anything different. Um, with the card of I can just add to that uh, I mean even the tilt angle that the panels are mounted at makes a big difference to the soiling and the self cleaning effect as well so so soiling is really is linked very much to the exposed area and also to uh, you know to the to the angle so if we look at if you look at a table for example if you leave a table outside the top side of the table will be dusty and the bottom side will be pretty much clean so it's, it's sort of similar when it comes to uh, comes to the underside of the panel right well, that uh, certainly makes sense. So um, if we move on to the next question, so um, um, we have a question about self-cleaning technologies. So say it's, uh, some of the new panels have self-cleaning technology. So would you still consider robotic cleaning economical um, or will the benefits be limited by, you know, these, uh, these technologies? So what, um, what are your, your thoughts on this? Would you like to go first, Kitanjali? Yeah, so I think we, if uh, when they're talking about self-cleaning technologies, maybe uh, the, Neil is referring to um, maybe, you know, the, the anti-soiling coatings, I guess, uh, that if that's, that's what he's referring to. So I think, yeah, like having that option along with the robotic module cleaning systems would actually give uh, the developers a lot more, um, lot more gain. But of course, like um, the adoption of um, these uh, anti-soiling coatings will um, uh, will happen slowly. I think that's out there. Like you know, again, a uh, lot of happenings around that as well. So I think yeah, the combination of that will only help the developers get get uh, more out of it. I would say rather. So it's it's going to be a complementary uh, 
um, to that as well. So we are doing the, you know, of course, we're solving the same problem, but in a different angles. And they can work together. Yeah. yeah. And if I can just add to that, uh, you know, um, if uh, there has been extensive research on this, uh, um, and uh, I, I don't remember the exact name of the organization, but in Qatar, one of the government organizations uh, spent quite a few years studying various uh, coatings and uh, you know their effect on the on the cleanliness, mm. and they basically came to the conclusion that uh, all of these coatings uh, do not have enough of an effect to, to not require proper cleaning. Uh, and if you look at the, at the effect uh, versus the, the power loss versus uh, uh, this coating, uh, uh, you know, various coatings, they determined that actually you, you do need to clean them to really get rid of the dust. I mean, again, it would it all also depend. You know, uh, Qatar is obviously uh, close to the sea as well, so you do have this this kind of saline uh, salinity in the air, which really causes everything to stick. So maybe in a uh, in a country where the dust does not stick to the panels, uh, you could get away with uh, with, with the coating, but but not in in, in harsher environments. Okay. So um, from what I'm hearing, I think it would be safe to say that. You know, all of these uh, anti-dust uh, coatings, hydrophobic coatings, by themselves, they wouldn't be enough. So you'd still have to, to clean them, uh, you know, either with a robot or any other options, but they wouldn't um, reduce the need for uh, cleaning. Yeah, exactly, Carlos. I mean, if you look at buildings, if you look at these big uh, glass uh, uh, towers, you know, the, 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 the glass windows are straight, so dust shouldn't naturally, settle, shouldn't naturally settle on them, and they have all sorts of coatings on them. However, they're still cleaned. They still require cleaning. So uh, there's no two, you, you cannot get past, uh, get away from, from the mechanical uh, process of, you know, wiping or cleaning a surface just by, by a coating. Okay. Well, um, it does make uh, a lot of sense. And I've had a, a few questions come up about uh, the optimal time for use in the robots and uh, programming the robots for cleaning. So. Um, Someone has asked, you know, could you program them so they clean overnight? Is that is that a? I'm sure yeah, you I would mean, have thought of this. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, nighttime cleaning and, and uh, cleaning at low sun hours is uh, is is the best way to do it, so you don't expose the panels to any shading or to any thermal shock, rather. Uh, and it's uh, it's de depending on the solution you have. If it's a, if it's an automated or semi-automated solution, you can clean any time of day. It's uh, ideally at night. So any time at night you can clean, and that's the preferred way of doing it. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, right, and um, well, I think you know we have answered uh, most most of the questions, and we are coming up to like the end of the of the time for this webinar, and you know as, as with all good things, you know, they have to come to an end at, at some point. So um, I'd like to uh, thank you, Getanjali and, and Zafir, for your presentations and all our, um, you know, everyone in our audience to, for being here with us today. And I'd like to remind you that you will get um, your uh, recordings and the presentations delivered today um, in a few uh, days' time. So you'll get, get them in, in PDF. And, um, you know, also um, next uh, week, I'd like to invite you to another webinar we have about uh, solar energy in Indonesia, which is a market that some of you might be keeping an eye on. And, um, yeah, finally, I'd like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, thank our sponsors, Sterling and Wilson, for uh, making these webinars uh, possible. So, as you know, the Real End program is free to attend. And this is uh, uh, thanks to the support of uh, our sponsors. And, um, you know, before we go, uh, get and Jali, any, um, any parting words? So I think uh, the perception that's out there that robotic cleaning is expensive, that needs to be changed. And that's, that's what we're here for. Uh, I think uh, that would be my closing comment. So robotic cleaning is extremely affordable, makes sense. And uh, of course, like, low water or waterless is the way to go. And I think well, that's what we are both are uh, talking about here. So Zafir, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I would echo those comments uh, largely. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, I believe the advantage is so clear 
and with uh, with more development on the robotic cleaning side and and viable solutions coming up uh, you know it's uh, uh, it's definitely the way to go forward um, you know we see in the epc work that we do uh, that uh, pretty much every uh, client of ours is opting for a robotic cleaning system rather than manual cleaning system so it's uh, it's definitely a uh, the, the trend i believe well, once again, thank you very much. And um, I'll, you know, I'll invite everyone in our audience to check our web page, uh, atainsights.com, where you can see uh, all of the webinars that we have programmed on the, the uh, relearn program. So hopefully see you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah, thank thanks, you. thanks, thank Carlos. You. Thank you.